Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about GPU offloading of on Wayland. So my name is Axel Davy. I'm a student at the Ecole Normale Supérieure of Paris. So first, I, I will uh, tell you what are the different technologies involved of in, in GPU offloading and how we can handle them. Next, I will explain how GPU offloading is handled with XDRI2 and how it is. Uh, then I will show you how we. We decided to make it work with Wellan, and to finish, I will uh, tell how it can work with X Wellan. So, first, the different technologies involved in GPU offloading. The first, the first technology we can have in mind is rendering. So, to render, we have to be auto uh, authenticated to to be able to render. Uh, the traditional way to to be able to render is there is a, a master, a DRAM master, for example, the X server. And um, if I am a client, I can open the device and uh, generate a magic number which I will send to the server, which will then use this number to authenticate me and I will be able to, to render. But there is a, a recent uh, overware introduced, which is render nodes. So render nodes um, uh, are device paths that I can open, I can open the device with them and render without uh, the need of authentication. But since uh, you I don't need any authentication, I won't be able to do some, some functionalities like uh, gem names. So what are gem names? <laughs> so to share the buffers between different contexts or, or devices, there are several ways. First, um, you may know that uh, the devices, uh, for example, if you have a dedicated card, it has its own memory, it's uh, VRAM, so it's only for your device, but in RAM, you can um, share memory b between all the graphic cards, because uh, all the graphic cards can have access to uh, the RAM. To share the, the buffers, you have to to give um, a meaning to the buffers. So when you manipulate buffers in your driver, you will manipulate handles, which are numbers. And this number will only have a meaning for you and will, uh, in f for you will be a buffer. For example, Mesa uses handles. But uh, if you want to another context to use your name, you can, uh, your handle, you can generate a gem name a gem name is a global um, handle for uh, the device, which means that everyone with this number will be able to access to this buffer. But uh, it's insecure because if you try and guess the correct number, you can access to the buffer. And since the, the numbers uh, start from one and are not very random, then uh, it's easy to, to catch some uh, buffers, and so it's very insecure. And uh, there are two use them because it was the only technology available at that time to, to share buffers. Uh, but now we have also a prime DMA buff file descriptors, which describes what the buffer is and where it lies in memory and gives uh, the right to access it. So it's secure because you can't guess all this information and you, to open a file, you have specific rights. So, so it's very secure. And uh, we will use it by default with Welland and there are three uh, use only them, on, on them. Now about memory speed, so uh, rendering to RAM is fast if you have a, a direct channel to talk to them. For example, in, in for uh, VRAM DDR3 DDR with a, a frequency of 900 megahertz and um, 128 bits uh, for the channel, you have a high capacity to read and write, so about uh, 14 gigabytes per second, so it, that, that's fast. But if you have to use a uh, channel to, to access to this memory, for example, the PCI Express uh, uh, channel, uh, so I took the example of uh, the channel that is on my computer, and so I have uh, eight lanes of uh, uh, 500 megahertz bus, and so that means I, per second I can share uh, four gigabytes via this, this, this bus. If, if, if I had an external device uh, with Thunderbolt, it, was, it would be only one gigabyte per second. So that's much slower than access di uh, direct access to RAM. So how can that have a meaning for, for GPU offloading? Well, uh, uh, a full screen, uh, full HD buffer 
is about 8 megabytes, but if I have to, to share 60 frames per second, it's going to be a, li a little more, which is about 500 uh, megabytes per second. So let's do a test on my system, which has an Intel card and an AMD card. Uh, uh, both have their own uh, memory access, but uh, the AMD card uh, to talk to RAM has to go through the PCI Express channel. And if I render a very, very light test, which uh, then only, which uh, doesn't give uh, any indication on the performance of the graphic card, but only on the, on the uh, speed of the memory. If I say, well, render this test in RAM, the Intel card, which has fast access to this RAM, will be about 10 gigabytes per second. So it's near the, what we saw before, which was 14 gigabytes per second, um, the maximum. So there is a slightly, uh, a bit of rendering. So that's why we don't access the maximum number. But for the AMD card, we saw uh, only uh, uh, five times less uh, frames because it is limited by the PCI Express channel. So likely, um, since your application will be not light but heavy, it will use the PCI Express channel to communicate important data. So with GPU offloading, when you want to use this card to render, you, want, you, you shouldn't ex uh, expect to have high FPS like this. Now uh, about tiling, you may have heard of it. E tiling is a way of reordering the pixels in, in memory so that your graphic card will render faster with, uh, with this tiling. It's very good for performance. For example, on my Intel card, which uh, tiling has a big uh, uh, performance impact. With Open Arena, I, I get three times more FPS frame per second with tiling. So that's a, a huge difference, but for some application, it won't have any difference. But the big problem about tiling is that we can't uh, give a buffer to another card and say, OK, I read it if it has tiling, because the other card won't understand anything. In fact, it's, uh, it depends on the models and you know, the things of the card. So for example, his Western Gears rendered on my AMD card, and the Intel card is displaying. So I say it, doesn't use, uh, it shouldn't use tiling, so OK, the Intel card understand. And here, it's when I allow the AMD card to use tiling. So we see that, uh, for example, the green pixels are much more in line than before, we, where it, it was uh, a gear. Uh, so we can understand that it's faster to, to manipulate uh, like that. But we would like this to, to be shown properly. So we will ha when we'll have to deal with tiling, what we want is we want to combine the high performance of tiling and the fact that we need uh, to share a linear buffer with your, the card. So uh, what we want to do is to render to a tile buffer and then do a copy to a linear buffer. Uh, when I mean linear, I mean with no tiling. And to finish with uh, DMA buff fences, which um, when you share a DMA buff, which is what we do to share the, the buffer between the two cards, uh, there are no fancies uh, shared between the two devices, which I mean internally each card has its own fancies to say I have not finished yet to write uh, on this buffer, wait a bit before reading it. And all these work pretty well, but with uh, two different devices, they won't share these fancies. So they will show garbage. And hopefully uh, a new solution will come, which is uh, uh, done by Mart Martin Lankost, uh, which are DMA buff fences, which, which are shared fences for all the devices. And this will remove glitches because uh, the, the two cards will share these fences and will do things correctly. Uh, an extra feature that has nothing to do with GPU flooding is that we can pull a DMA buff to know if the fences are still there or not, which means that in user space, you can know if the rendering has been finished or not which is cool. Now, how does GPU offloading work with X i 2 So the, the main mechanisms to, to render with X i 2 is I'm a client. A client. I, um, I tell to the X server, hey, I want to render. And, and there is a special bit to say I want to render on, the, on a specific device, uh, uh, not the main one, uh, perhaps. 
and then the X server will give back a path. We open the device at uh, the, the file at this path, which is the device, and then we have to authenticate, generate a magic number, send it to the X server. Okay, then uh, in the dry to scheme, I have to ask the X server uh, my buffers to uh, which I will use to render. So I will ask, yeah, I want a buffer. Okay, the X server gives a gem name. So remember that it is insecure. And the, the client will use this gem, gem, gem name to, to, use the, to get the buffer and render to it. When it, has wait, when it has finished rendering, it will tell the X server it has finished. It will swap and X will copy the buffer to the current location. And if you have heard about the additional copies with compositing, it's here. Um, when you do compositing, you won't allow the X server to copy directly to the screen content. Instead, the X server will have to copy to an intermediate location. And then the compositor will then copy uh, what he sees at this intermediate location to the screen. So it's two copies, in where, whereas we could use only one. And we learn, and there are three improve this, and we have only one copy. OK, so how it works with GPU offloading. First, you have some configuration to do. You have to provide a, 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 a specific driver for each uh, uh, device. A DDX is a, a driver specific to load X with the device. And both have to be loaded uh, at, uh, at the start. Uh, you can either uh, write what we want uh, uh, for DDX to be loaded for each driver in xorg.conf uh, configuration file, or it's automatic if you don't have any xorg.conf configuration file. And next, once the, or the computer is started, you have to use xrender to, to say what you want to do with, with these devices. You, ha you have two modes. The one used, for example, with NVIDIA property driver is to have one GPU for display, for example, the Intel card and one GPU for rendering, for example, the NVIDIA cards. So uh, it's not GPU offloading exactly. The second one is GPU offloading. You have one GPU for display and rendering, and the other one uh, can be used eventually when you want uh, by specifying specifically we want to use it. So here you will have to configure this mode. Each device will have a provider number, and you can specify uh, which uh, provider number will be uh, for displaying and which uh, for offloading. And with DRI Prime, you can say uh, provider one, I want to use this provider for rendering. And often, zero is for the one displaying, and one is for the one, uh, the second one. So that's why uh, you use DRI, DRI Prime equal one always, when you want to use, to use the secondary device. So internally, how does it work? In the X server, um, it has loaded the correct DDX for you and send you a correct gem names uh, on your device. Uh, but when you will commit uh, the buffer, um, the, the, the location the, of the X server the, when it does the copy will have to be shared between the two cards. So for that, it will use the prime DMA buff API and uh, it will have special codes in the DDXs to handle that and create a linear buffer so with no tiling, shared between the two cards. So we, this requires special code in, in the DDX and X server to handle all that. When you don't have compositing and the client is full screen, the uh, target will be directly the full screen uh, uh, wood buffer. There will be an exchange uh, so that it's, it is possible. But if you don't have compositing and your application is not full screen, you will see nothing. It will be a black surface, just because the, there is uh, no, no one who cares about the copy to the linear buffer shared to the screen pixel map. But when you have compositing, it is done, so it works. And to make uh, glitches, and, uh, to remove glitches, uh, every time the buffer, uh, we say that a part of the buffer has been rendered again, we say no, the whole buffer is, has to be loaded. And it works, but with tearings. So tearings is um, I'm displaying a frame and I write over the frame where, whereas I'm, I'm displaying. So uh, I have uh, new and old content in the same frame. It's, it's very strange and 
it doesn't look nice. Um, there is no synchronization at all with the uh, screen refresh. But at least the content is correct uh, because you always copy to a buffer whose previous content was correct but old. Then uh, even if you read um, uh, before it has been finished writing, you will uh, see the correct thing. Because uh, as you remember, there is no fence uh, bet shared between the, the two devices. So one will wi write on the buffer and the other will read at the same time. So, so that, that's also uh, the root of the tearings. We, we can't do vi without tearings with in this situation. So how uh, can we make that work with VLAN? So in VLAN, the, the main mechanism is that the clear is aware of the path, uh, of the device path of the compositor. The compositor says, I use this card, and you, you can connect to it. I can authenticate you to it if you want. But the client could also open another device and especially use uh, the random node of the device and then doesn't need authentication to the compositor. And uh, the rendering is a bit different because uh, it doesn't ask any buffer to, to the server, like for DRI3. Uh, it will have its own set of buffers, will uh, make the server aware of these buffers, so it will import them and, okay, I know these buffers. And the cl client will choose one, render, and then we'll send to the compositor and the compositor will, will use it. If the client will uh, render to another buffer and the compositor eventually, when it gets a new web buffer, will release the, the old one and say you can reuse this buffer again. Okay, so how can we make GPU offloading with that? Obviously, we can uh, choose the device, the device we want uh, to render to. Uh, what we want to improve first over the right tool, we want to remove the tearings. It would be cool, right? But we want some synchronization. So it's possible with VLAN because we have a way to synchronize to, to the refreshes of the compositor without actually care about the GPU. It's a sort of frame callbacks. And it would like to, re to have uh, the, least, uh, the least possible uh, uh, code in the server. So everything should be client side side, so it's possible since the, the client knows the, the device of the compositor, it can actually know, well, I, I will give to the compositor a buffer it can understand. So that, that makes sense. And um, we would like some sort of hot plug support and, and that's all. So the very first scheme that came uh, to, to mind, which is not very good, is that the, the server Will, will be the DRAM master of all the cards and will ad advertise all of them. Oh, I can authenticate to them, okay? And the, the client will see, oh, I have all these sets of, of uh, devices I can use. I will choose one. And then uh, the client will send a buffer the compositor can read, we can read with no tiling. But there is still uh, some issues with this approach. We have still server side code to be the RAM master of all the, de the devices. And we want to simplify that. So we say that we will rely only on one of the nodes. The compositor won't do anything, won't have new codes, it, we don't change anything to the compositor. And it will, uh, everything will be clear on side. It will use one of the nodes and, and no need of extra code. So everything is the, in the client. But Remember, for XDRI2, we had a way to specify which device we want to use. We had a provider number, which was mostly constant because it was zero for the one displaying and one for the other card. So here we have to find something else. The device path, the device path uh, of the device is not constant across reboot or across uh, uh, updates because it depends on the, the speed of the boot uh, of the driver. So we, um, we decided to rely on um, a tag filled by UDEM, uh, which uh, this, we doesn't change attribute and, it, and which looks like that. So this is the, the ID path tag for my uh, dedicated card. And, and when I want uh, to, to use this card uh, to render, for example, GMR, GLMark2, I will use this command. But since 
it's a bit tricky to remember all that. We decided that uh, one will be a special meaning to say that I want another card than the compositor. So when you have only two cards, uh, it, ta it takes the other one. Uh, so it will work, but uh, in Wellon you can launch unbedded compositors and, all the comp and you can launch clients inside this compositor. And here we would like to be able to launch clients inside the compositor uh, on the dedicated card if we want. And, and so if I, I do this and launch an, an embedded compositor, uh, all the clients will use a different device than their compositor, which, we, which is the embedded compositor. So we are not using the device we want. They will all be using the Intel card instead of the IMD card here. So here will be the, the sure way. You are sure what device will be used. And here it's uh, the different card than the compositor. OK, so Hotplug can be supported because uh, there is no server side code to, de to detect there is a new device and, and do something with it. So, so that's cool. But as we said, uh, we are going, going to share a linear buffer with the compositor when you do, we don't use the same card than the compositor. So it isn't optimal to render to this buffer. And we said that we want to render to a tile buffer and do a copy to a linear buffer. So how can we do that? And there are two ways. The first way is say, well, compositing, it's light. We can do compositing to a linear buffer. So uh, when I would like Okay, so <laughs> there, are two way to, there are two possible ways. So the first one is to launch an embedded compositor on the dedicated card, and all clients inside will only know that their compositor uses the dedicated card, and we use tiling because they know they, they can share tiling buffers with, with their compositor. Uh, but the problem uh, with that approach is that we, ha we induce some lag because there is a, an extra layer there is more CPU consumption, and so it's not kind of cool. But uh, remember that okay, it's working again. Re remember that we had um, that I'd say that with Derai2 it was cool that the content was okay even if Francis didn't work. So here we have we'll have this problem because we we render we give fully rendered buffer to to the compositor. And it won't uh, it won't be copied copies of uh, on already uh, correct buffers, and so uh, if you do if you directly show the buffer, it will be semi black or it will not show the correct content. So you have to have a small lag to so that the composite the rendering finishes, and so right now only this solution will give uh, correct content. Because the second way is to say, well, do the copy in Mesa and send the copied buffer. But we have glitches with this approach because we send a buffer that is not finished rendering. And, and the compositor will just read the, the, the black content. But uh, we can, wh when we do the copy, we can say, well, I will wait b before committing that the rendering has been finished. So it's equivalent to GL finish. Uh, but it is very slow. It's uh, severely impact performance because uh, when you have finished waiting and you send, say, send the, comp the buffer, then there will be a long time uh, before you feed new rendering commands to the graphic cards. So it won't be used fully. That's why it decreases performance. But the, the good thing is that in both cases, you can run a full desktop on the card you want. For example, if I launch a full screen uh, nested compositor, it will just work. Uh, there will be a small lag, uh, but uh, all my desktop will be rendered on the dedicated card. It is a full screen buffer, so the Intel card won't, ha won't have anything to do than displaying. Also, the two approaches have no tearings, even if they can be glitches. And the sync, uh, synchronization to the screen refresh is working. So obviously, the second way 
here the copying mesa is what we want uh, to do uh, for uh, uh, most of applications, uh, but it will have to wait DMA buffenses to to be fully uh, workable. Okay, now I want you to think about another case, which is I have two cards, but also two displays, and each of them is connected to one of the cards. How do we want to handle that? And, and that can happen on some laptops where, where the v, uh, VGA connector is on the NVIDIA uh, card. And on Windows, in this case, uh, what they do is that they switch so that all uh, the applications are rendered on the most powerful card, which is the dedicated card. But, um, but first, we don't know how to switch GPU uh, online uh, with our technology uh, in MESA uh, and the kernel. Maybe one day, but I think it's very far. Uh, so what we want to have is a compromise, I think. I think we want that each client created on one display will be uh, uh, on the device uh, connected to the display. It's possible. So um, I have two displays, and each client will, have, will use one of the graphic cards. They will be able to use styling, etc., have good performance. But if I want uh, to change uh, off-screen one application, since it's on the other cat, I will have to do something. So this uh, will have to be handled by the compositor. The compositor will have to have two well-on connections for each display, and display uh, both in one for one display and one for the other. One will connect to the dedicated cat, and one over for the integrated cat. And, well, and when it knows a client wants to change a screen, it will have to do a copy. So it's not uh, perfect, but at, at least if you launch uh, the client of the display uh, uh, you want, you will have the best performance possible because you can use styling, page flips, etc. without uh, unless copy. Okay, so I will repeat a bit uh, and summarize. For X, there are two the server controls the devices. It is their master of them. It has special code uh, to handle them. And there is a DDX for each device. The copy type buffer to the linear buffer is handled in the X server. The client doesn't do anything. And there is special logic for that uh, in the DDX. The clients uh, always authenticate to the server. And obviously, the DDX has special code to, to handle all that. With Welland, we don't have any code in the server, except uh, for the last uh, example I told you, but we, this isn't uh, a feature working uh, uh, in X2. And we rely only on one the nodes. The client knows it uses a different device than the compositor and adapts itself to have a, it has special code to handle that and wander uh, to a type buffer and copy to a linear buffer. And it can be with an embedded compositor eventually. So right now, what has been done so that the, the perfect uh, GPU offloading support uh, in is there? So random nodes ha are here, and they are going to be uh, defaulted uh, 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 soon. Uh, uh, right now, you have to, to have a special command line when booting the kernel to have random nodes. Uh, the patches for, for using Dari Prime uh, in Mesa to indicate what device we want to use with uh, ID path tag, uh, it's working. And uh, also a cool feature with recent kernels is that the GPU you don't use can shut down uh, when needed. So you don't have to do it manually, it's cool. What needs to be done is DMA buffenses. I, as I said, it's the uh, most wanted features. Uh, we need also to handle the copy in MESA, but once DMA buffenses uh, are coming, I think we will add it uh, pretty soon. Um, also, Instead of using DRI Prime to indicate what device we want to use for a program, we don't want uh, to use scripts and so, so ideally we want uh, something automatic which I uh, would say, I want uh, for this program always to use uh, a device, device A, for example. And DRI Conf, uh, which is already used to uh, customize the parameters of the graphic cards for uh, several programs, uh, can be used for that. So there has been uh, some work on it, but not finished. 
Also, some remaining applications are still relying on gem names, even Wayland applications. Like VA API, it's still using an old Wayland interface where, when there, there was no uh, uh, DMA, uh, DMA buff support yet, so it has to, to be rewritten, but it's not so much work. And obviously, the, uh, the compositor has to do some uh, special uh, things to, to handle multiple displays connected to different devices. But I think it will be very cool. Now, how it can work with XWLAN? So I don't know if you, you know about XWLAN. So uh, basically, it's a uh, next server uh, uh, we, uh, connected to the compositor, with the Wayland compositor. And it's, it tells uh, the new clients that come up. And, and, and XWLAN we will send the buffers correctly. Uh, Glamour is. Uh, what we want to use for GPU acceleration, it's uh, a library uh, based on OpenGL that um, handles X render because X uh, can do some acceleration from the clients, but well and not. And since it, it's OpenGL based, we don't have specif specific uh, GPU code for, uh, for all the cards, so it's all in Mesa. And if you think of it, we don't have a real need to support uh, egg GPU offloading like it is supported with DRI2 because we can already launch an embedded compositor on the cart we want and inside all X applications we run will run on the cart uh, of the compositor. So we can already have GPU offloading without supporting X uh, GPU offloading and have several DDXs. So what we want if is to have only one DDX loaded for X run. Okay. But there is some problems. Uh, DRI2 doesn't work with one node, obviously because it uses gem names which are forbidden on one node. So we have to support DRI3 only for uh, this use case. And DRI3 work with one node because uh, the difference is you don't get the device path <coughs> you want to, uh, the server to use. You ask uh, an already opened um, file descriptor on the device. Uh, so the server can do whatever it wants and use uh, uh, random nodes, etc. And they are free uh, use only uh, DMA buff FD, which are supported by random nodes and are secure. But the right three uh, is not entirely ready. It's still uh, under thinking, but I think it will be uh, ready for production soon. So do you have any question? Yes? It's a Maybe someone can give a micro uh, for the questions. It's Okay. Okay, so the question is about uh, uh, with macOS, they, they have an option. Uh, they can, when we move, uh, we have two displays connected to different GPUs. We can um, have an uh, application on one display uh, connected to the right GPU, but when we move the display, uh, notification is sent to the application so it can change of device. So can we have a, a similar support? Uh, well, I was told there was an extension, but I think it's only GLX, I'm not sure, uh, when we can say uh, to the application that uh, OpenGL is broken and it has to redo everything from the start. So it could be used to, to do that, but uh, I, uh, I was told that no application care about that, so, <laughs> so obviously it will be some uh, application support. Yes, uh, but but since uh, 
since they, they would have to, re to, to do all the, the work again to initialize, they, they will need special code in the client to handle that. So, so uh, if it, it's not an initial in extension, it could be added uh, eventually to, uh, to the, uh, the Wayland protocol, or I don't know. Uh, we can find a way, but maybe later. Is there other questions? Here? Uh, yeah, in mono micro. For the, the copy after the offload GPU has written to its tile render buffer, is on the NVIDIA side of that render, that tile format is the document sufficiently for you to use Wayland to de swizzle it as you copy it to the front buffer, to the screen? So your question is when you do the, the the copy from the tile buffer to the uh, linear buffer. Do we have enough information uh, to convert the tiling uh, when we do the copy? Is that your question? Yeah, to avoid the extra blit. Yeah. To avoid the blit? Yeah. It is uh, understanding the, the tiling uh, directly. Uh, unfortunately, this would need uh, uh, support for the tiling for, for the cart uh, itself. So um, in this it's not possible, uh, unfortunately. We, we need a copy for that. There is no other way. Other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.